Back in 2016, the UK passed a law called the Investigatory Powers Act, which is one of those laws that was probably presented to people as necessary to protect the children, stop the terrorists, save the puppies, and all of that stuff. But in reality, the purpose of this law is to erode people's rights. And this is being realized now by a lot of people, now that the enforcement of this act is actually going into effect, and that potential enforcement has actually pushed Apple to disable advanced data protection controls in iCloud for UK users because the Investigatory Powers Act, or IPA as I'll call it, would make that technology illegal. And this is because one of the provisions in the IPA allows the UK government to issue orders to technology-based companies that are operating within the country to provide access to encrypted data that they are storing for the individual. Now, for most cloud storage solutions, this really isn't a problem, technically speaking, because the tech company is the one that's handling the encryption. So they have the keys to decrypt whatever you store on their servers. And they actually do that decryption for you every time you access Google Drive or Dropbox. The process is completely transparent to the end user. So you also wouldn't know if any of these tech companies decrypted your cloud storage for the authorities. But with Apple's iCloud, when you use the advanced data protection setting, your data gets end-to-end -end encrypted meaning that you alone have the decryption key and Apple actually makes you go through the process of creating a recovery key for your iCloud data before you're even able to turn on advanced data protection because that key is the only thing that could get your data back if you were to ever lose access to your iCloud account. So the only way that Apple or any other company could provide access to the UK government for an end-to-end -end encrypted solution like this would be to create some kind of backdoor in the encryption or in the app. Introduce some kind of known vulnerability that would be secretly disclosed to the UK equivalent of the NSA or the FBI so that they can break into iCloud accounts whenever they feel the need to. But from Apple's perspective, they clearly saw that as too risky because hackers might discover the back door and use it to cause all kinds of mayhem. So they just got rid of the option that actually gives you full control over your iCloud data so that they could then comply with the law enforcement request, which by the way, Apple complies with about 78% of the data requests that are made by UK law enforcement which is still rookie numbers compared to the US of A. We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. But it's still pretty concerning that there's a four out of five chance of the Bobbies just being allowed to go through your iCloud data because they say that they suspect you of something. Now, luckily, there is a solution to not just make iCloud, but any cloud service out there a whole lot less spooky to actually give you true end-to-end -end encryption regardless of what country you live in. And that's important because it's not just the UK that is passing laws like this. Many others have done it and many more will follow suit. So the simple fix is the fact that we've always had end-to-end -end encryption at home. There's so many different free and open source options for encrypting your files. Every modern operating system ships with encryption libraries that our user land programs call on. And at the end of the day, encryption is just a special kind of math. So it's something that fundamentally can't be banned in any meaningful way. Now, if you decide to do encryption yourself, there's a number of ways that you can go about it. You might be familiar with full disk encryption. In the Linux world, Lux is generally what's recommended for that, and that's something that you really should be using. But for cloud storage, you're either going to want to use per file encryption, or you're going to want to create an encrypted volume to store many files in and then store that encrypted volume in the cloud. So per file encryption works the way that it sounds. Each file is encrypted individually, and this can provide a lot of granularity to your cloud storage because there's probably some files you don't even care to encrypt. Like if there's a picture of you that's already posted on social media, that's essentially public information. Why even bother encrypting it? But if you want to encrypt a lot of files or all of the files that you'll be putting in cloud storage are gonna be encrypted, then this per file encryption method will probably start to get cumbersome. And that's where the encrypted vaults come in. 
Cryptomator is probably the best tool for doing this. It's a FOSS program that's compatible with every major operating system, and it's a vault that is specifically designed to be used with cloud storage because it encrypts your files as you place them in the vault before uploading them to the cloud, and it doesn't require you to download the entire vault in order to just access a couple specific files that you stored in it. So the result of this is inside of the directory that you select to be your Cryptomator vault, which is G drive in my case, you have these files called vault.cryptomator and masterkey.cryptomator that get created. And these files are basically what make the encrypted Cryptomator vault work. And there's also a backup of each of these files that gets created. So make sure that you store those somewhere safe. Now, Cryptomator also creates a directory, which is called D by default. I believe you can change this in the settings, but of course I have D here, which is where your encrypted files actually get stored. So if you drill down into the lowest directory that's in here, you'll notice that there's a number of files with random alphanumeric names, and there's one that's called DurID, and all of them end with the C9R file extension. Now, the DurID file contains necessary metadata that stores a unique identifier for the directory that your files are in. So this is another important file that's necessary to the working of the vault. Make sure it doesn't get deleted. And everything else that you're seeing in this folder here are actually individual files that are stored in an encrypted format. So if you wanted to view these, you can't just view it normally in the browser, okay? Like if we go to uh, try to view it, it's gonna tell us that no previews available. And this is what the file looks like inside of a text editor, just to show you that it is completely unreadable to Google the police or anyone else who doesn't go through the proper decryption process. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Let's go back up to our G drive, and I'm just gonna go ahead and download uh, this entire thing. So this would be the process if we wanted to basically open up our vault on a new computer with every single file in it. I'm just gonna save it inside of uh, my video folder for this project. And then we'll open up Cryptomator. And then we wanna click on the option down here to add a vault and we want to open up an existing vault. So just like it tells us here, we're going to be looking for a file called vault.cryptomator that we downloaded from Google Drive. And Google Drive actually downloads folders as a zip file, so I'm just going to extract this here so that the G Drive folder actually is available when I go to look for it in Cryptomator. So we're gonna choose this now, go into videos, UK made data privacy illegal, G drive, and we have the master key, or actually the vault dot cryptomator right here. And it found it successfully, it added vault G drive. So now we're gonna go ahead and unlock this. And it also creates the mount point for you in your operating system automatically. So very, very convenient. Uh, you go to unlock now and enter the password. So this is the original password that you created whenever you created this vault. Unlock was successful and now I can reveal the drive. And this reveals all of the files that we had in there with the uh, secrets that don't really have anything interested in them. Like I can just add these out. So yeah, not really anything interesting in them, but you get the idea. And then there's also this picture file that's uh, I believe a Sneed meme, the rare Oppenheimer Sneed meme. Now, let's say that I didn't want to download the entire G Drive folder because maybe I've got a whole lot of stuff that's saved in here and I just want one file in particular. Well, if we drill in here, let's find a particular file, like uh, this one, for example. So if you took note of this file name that was created, and I believe this is another setting that you can change within uh, Cryptomator to make the file names less verbose or maybe even create them timestamp based or something like that. But anyway, as long as you take note of the name of the file, that's how you can figure out which one is which, you could just go ahead and download that particular file 
And you're also, of course, gonna need that directory ID. So we're just going to, or actually I saved that file already, so I don't need to download it again. Um, but we are gonna need to download this dir ID, and we're gonna have to place it into the right folder, and we're also going to have to create this directory, stru directory structure locally on our computer. So this is the only part that's um, kind of a pain, right? Because you have to basically create this G drive and then create D, create 5C, create this. Um, so depending on the cloud storage you're using, it might not be as painful. You might just be able to copy and paste the directory structure, but I don't think that you can do that uh, with Google Drive. So anyway, you need to place the files that you're interested in, and you need to, of course, place the dir ID in there as well, into that correct folder path. And then we can just come back over to Cryptomator and we can open the, the vault again like we did last time. And make sure that you're selecting the vault.cryptomator file. Unlock now. Enter the password. Reveal the drive. And then you see that it just has that one secrets text file in there. So there you go, a simple encryption solution for the cloud that no government can take away from you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store based.win if you wanna buy my merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay a Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.